Tonight, I'm going to be teaching on two revelations. Okay, the Deuteronomy 111 thousand fold increase. I'm going to be explaining that in a bit. And I'm going to be doing an impartation on it so that you can receive it too and see it manifest in your life in the ways that we and other people across the country have been seeing it. And then I'm going to be teaching right after that about the thing in your life in this season that God showed me, the enemy's assignment that he has been putting on people's businesses, their homes, their ministries, their projects that is squeezing out their ability to succeed, to grow, to flourish, to prosper. It's a hidden, sneaky assignment of the enemy that God unveiled and revealed to us. And as we've been going across the country and teaching these revelations, man, the breakthroughs and the miracles that are happening are just astonishing, okay? It's just amazing what God has been doing when I teach these two things that I'm gonna be teaching tonight. That's why this is an elongated web stream this evening because I need to connect for you these two revelations so you can get a full manifestation of something. You know, have you ever had like an impartation for financial blessing happen, you received it, your faith was high for it, but you never saw the manifestation. It's because maybe there was something that was blocking it from actually coming to pass in your life. We're gonna deal with both ends of it. You're gonna get an impartation tonight for the thousand fold increase, but you're also gonna break off everything that's strangling your finances, preventing you from breaking your debt, preventing your business from going forward, preventing your ministry from succeeding, preventing your household from flourishing. So it's going to be an amazing, exciting night. Now, look, I am not normally a prosperity teacher. Okay. I don't preach a prosperity message, but I do preach a word with fervor and I go for it when God has shown me a, a now word, a season word, a, a, a word for this moment that will break out for the body of Christ. And because I've been preaching this message and I've seen that break out everywhere I go, I had to give it to you. I remember I, I had had so much amazing things happen at the churches I've been going to in the last four months. I came home and I was like, I had this burden on my heart. I was like, God, I want to give this to everybody. This is amazing what's been happening. And he goes, you can't give it to everybody. Just do it on a web stream. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And he goes, yes. And if you go and you do it and you're there, I'll be there to make it happen for the people. So tonight is going to be something fantastic that takes place in your life, a real impartation and a real healing and a real deliverance and breakthrough. Amen. Okay. I know that we've had some prophecies of doom and gloom for our economy. And you know what? Here's the deal. I, I you know, that's not my realm uh, to prophesy those types of words to people, but you know, a lot of people are prophesying that the economy is going to crash, that, you know, it's going to turn upside down. And you know what? If it does, what I have to say is we are God's people. We are citizens of heaven and we are not under the power of a world system. Okay. We're not under the power of the system. Okay. Heaven has no lack. We are citizens of heaven. And Jesus prayed for us to you know, to say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, there's no poverty. There's no lack. There's no financial difficulty. All provisions that we need are in heaven. And Jesus told us to pray whatever's in heaven would come to earth. Jesus himself was the master of multiplying provisions. I mean, look, he, a couple pieces of bread and a couple fish and a few fish, and he fed thousands. He fed thousands. So we have to realize that even if the economy were to turn upside down, we are not to be under the control of the world's economy. Amen. God's kingdom is always on the increase. That's what Isaiah 9 says, that of the increase of his government and of his peace, there is no end. There is no end. God's economy is always on the increase. Jesus was going about doing the Father's business all the time. And so if, if God's business is always being seen to, and if his kingdom and his government is always on the increase, it means that we are always on the increase because we are administrators of his kingdom here on earth. Jesus, uh, the kingdom can be always on the increase and never ending if we get stuck, if we are in a financial bind, if we don't have 
the provisions and the things we need to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. Amen. It takes finances to do that. So even if the economy turns upside down, God is going to make sure that we are like Jesus, that we are going around doing his business nonstop, always on the increase. And he's going to make sure that we also come and, and be able to take a hold of and live the abundant life Jesus came to give us. Okay. So look, that's just a tiny bit of the reasons why I think that God showed me this first teaching I'm going to share with you now. And it's the Deuteronomy 111 thousand fold increase. Okay. See, I'd always put my faith on the 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold that we read in Mark 4. But six years ago, this first started to happen to me. God spoke to me one day and said he was going to start to release that thousand fold blessing. And I said, oh, really? Is that right? I'm like, where is that in the Bible? And he told me, Deuteronomy 111. So I went to it and I'm going to read it to you now. This is what it says. May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more as you are and bless you as he hath promised you. Okay, so when I read that, I thought, well, you know, that could mean a lot of things. That could mean a spiritual blessing. That could mean, you know, a uh, children's blessing. That could mean household blessing. What does that mean, God? Does that have anything to actually do with money? So I looked up the words contained in that scripture. And when I got to the word thousand, I was reading it in the Strong's and it says, okay, it means the number 1000. But the etymology of the word thousand here in this scripture means this. Listen, cattle, oxen, farming and possessions to hear that cattle oxen farming and possessions in ancient times what was their money their herds their flocks their farms their sheep their cattle that is money so when we look at this scripture about i pray that the lord make you a thousand times more than you are and bless you as he has promised He's saying, I want to increase your cattle. I want to increase your farming. I want to increase your oxen, which in today's vernacular would mean, I want to increase your business. I want to increase your ministry. I want to increase your project that you're working on. I want to increase your bank account. I want to increase your savings. It is definitely not just a spiritual increase of a thousandfold. It is a financial increase. Amen. Now, when God first told me that, honestly, I, I'll be honest with you. I, it was too big for me to comprehend. I'm like, a thousandfold. Wow, God, I mean, that's terrific. I hope you do it. I just can't quite grasp it with my faith. But, you know, okay, amen. I'll be in agreement with you. You know, make me have greater faith so I can believe with you. And he did just that. From that moment on, he started to show me confirmation, supernatural signs by showing me the number 111 wherever I went. I mean, it started out simple like, I would just be walking through the house and God would make me sovereignly look up at the clock right when it would turn 111, right? Or I'd be cooking something in the microwave, right? And I would look up, again, God doing it sovereignly. I would look up at the microwave right when there was one minute, 11 seconds left for the thing to cook in the microwave, okay? I would be in the car worshiping, right? Just going along, praising the Lord, worshiping. And God, again, he would have me look down at my stereo deck right when it was like track one, 11 seconds in on the music. I mean, and this was just happening all the time, all over the place. I mean, even my husband was getting it. My husband sits and works on his computer, doing all kinds of projects for us all day long. And he said that God would make him sovereignly look up at the corner of his computer at the clock right when it would turn 111. And I would hear from him. He'd be quiet all day. I wouldn't hear a word from him, right? He'd be working away and all of a sudden I'd hear, honey, it's 111. Every day, like clockwork, like Big Ben going off in the corner of the house, you know, at 111, 111. It was amazing. And then I remember one time I was like, okay, God, this is like crazy. I'm seeing 111s wherever I go. Do me a favor, really show me you're doing this by waking me up tonight right at 111. Okay, so I prayed that little prayer, right? I went to bed and I fell asleep. So I'm laying on my side and you know how you are, like you'll roll over, you may be on one side and then you roll over to the next. Well, I do that a couple times a night, but I never actually open my eyes when I do it, right? So I'm sitting there on my side, I'm sleeping and I did the rollover thing. So I'm rolling over like this and as I did it, I opened my eyes right as the clock in front of me turned 111. I almost missed it for a second. I rolled all the way over and then I went, oh, it did it, it happened. 
what 11 right when I rolled over oh my gosh I can't believe you made me even open my eyes to see it right I was so amazed and my faith all this time was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and Lord is telling me right now that some of you have even been already seeing 111s or, or 11 11s like all over the place if you have chat that in okay because like everywhere I go I ask people have you been seeing 111 or 11 11 they all go yes yes we have it's because this is not just for me it is for the corporate body amen and it's, it's so exciting okay so i remember right right after that happened i had this dream i had this dream that god came into the room and he handed me his cell phone he says and he said to me i want you to plug your phone number in to my cell phone so I can call you and give you the 111 blessing and I was like oh, I was so excited right I grabbed the phone I'm like okay okay and so I, I pushed a one and then I pushed in my area code 623 and I was about to put in the rest of the numbers and God snatched the phone out of my hand and walked out of the room and in a dream I was like wait no God wait wait I have to put the rest of the numbers so you can call me with the blessing and then I wake up and I'm like Oh my gosh, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm not going to get it because I didn't put my number in? And immediately I heard the Lord say, shh, quiet, just calm down, be, be, be still. He goes, I want you to add up what you put in my phone. I said, okay. I put in a one and then I put in six and a two and a three. What is that? Six plus two is eight plus three is 11. I had programmed in 111 into God's cell phone, okay? It was amazing, right? And it just kept on going. It didn't stop. Like, I can remember, remember I went to a meeting and Patricia King was preaching, right? And I'm sitting in the back and she starts preaching about Deuteronomy 111. I'm like, oh my gosh, everybody's starting to get it. It is, it's corporate. It's not just for one person. This is so exciting, right? And so she's preaching the message and I'm getting my faith up and I'm so excited. And I'm sitting in the back of my phone, starts freaking out. It starts like rumbling, vibrating. And I look at it and the phone is stuck. It's stuck on this one screen for my emails, right? And I can't get out of that screen. I tried to back out. I tried to turn it off. Nothing would work. And finally I looked and it said that the phone had gotten stuck like that when my 100th and 11th email had come into my phone. Okay, it had never done that before. I mean, I had to even pop off the back and take the battery out to reset the phone. It was like, God was telling me like, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm sending you a message via email. I'm stuck on 111, okay? I'm stuck. And I came home, I told my husband, he was so excited, right? And then like the next week I go to another meeting and the same exact thing happened. It had never happened on my phone before. It had never happened since. There, I went to the meeting, this pastor is talking about Deuteronomy 111. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's everywhere, it's everywhere, right? And he's preaching this message and I'm sitting in the back again and my phone did the exact same thing. It, it started vibrating, freaking out. It got stuck on the screen. And I look, and I'd already cleared out my, e my emails, okay? I look, and it had gotten stuck again when the 111th email came in. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is amazing. And God was saying, he's like, I'm stuck on this message. I'm sending you an email message that I'm doing the 111 thing. And I remember I came home that night. I was so excited, right? I was like, it is happening all over the place. Oh my gosh, honey, right? This is so amazing. And he was very happy because he said, yeah, well, you know, you when you weren't here, I looked up at the clock again right when it turned 111 on my computer. And so I remember I went into the bedroom. I was going to go to bed and I said, well, I think I'll watch a little movie before I go to bed. So I stick a DVD in the, in the DVD player and I pushed play and it just played for like a minute or so and then it got stuck. And I was like, oh no, right? And I'm taking the remote and I'm going, play, 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 play. And then I'm like, forward, rewind, forward, rewind. It's not moving at all. I mean, I even like pushed the eject button and the stop button and it wouldn't move. It was like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I'm going to actually have to go pull the plug out of the back of this player so that the, I can reboot this thing. So I get up, I go to the DVD player. And as I'm reaching around the back to pull out the power plug, I look down and saw that it had gotten stuck on track one 11 seconds in. I could not believe it, okay? It was just all over the place. And then finally, after all this stuff, God did a manifestation, a big one, okay? I was in my house one day working and I got a call from my office and they were like, oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe what happened. Every month that we've been giving the lease money to the people that own this building for our office, they have not been paying the mortgage with it 
and they're going to they're going into foreclosure and we're losing our space and i was like oh you're kidding right oh my gosh so i remember hanging up the phone going oh my gosh what are we gonna do now god boy i really need that 111 thing we're gonna need to move we're gonna need a place i really need your help right and i'm praying and i'm praying i'm praying 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 with all my might and i saw a vision i saw a vision of my hands reaching out and there was oil at the tips of my fingers and i go what is that god and he goes you've struck oil it's at your fingertips and i was like yes at my fingertips that means it's close it's near yes right so i'm like okay god great so a couple days pass by and i'm like okay god nothing's happening really need that 111 you said i struck oil it's right at my fingertips where is it right a couple days more go by it gets to that friday and i'm still going okay god you know is there we gotta move out of the office i really need you to make a manifestation of this thing and i don't hear a word right i get a phone call though two hours later I get a phone call and it's my office and they said you are not gonna believe what happened i'm like what they said there is a couple that came in to this city where we're at where we're at and they are looking for a house they came from another country to buy a house here and they didn't have a place to stay and there was an extra room in the ministry office so we let them stay in that room i said oh okay that's cool what happened and they said well they went out the wife went out every single day looking at houses and every time she'd walk into a house she would hear the lord say nope this isn't the one nope this isn't the one nope it, this isn't the one and finally she says gosh god why did you send me here from another country to buy a house i mean it's like none of these are working what's going on he goes i sent you here to buy a house but not for yourself they ended up being moved by the spirit of the lord to write us a hundred thousand dollar check for a donation to the ministry for our transformation house I was like, if that is i'm sorry but if that isn't like the thousand fold increase manifesting openly I, I don't know what is we were so excited it was like it was proof to us it wasn't even like we were just excited because we got the money it was like it was proof that we were hearing god that we were hearing right that we had our faith on the in the right place and that god was honoring that he was doing exactly what he said he was going to do which was the impossible and he was gonna and he was making it happen so we were so excited right and then like three days after that i had to go out on tour and i was going to virginia to one of my favorite places with one of my favorite pastors uh pastor wayne Watkins, who we just love 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 and when i got to the airport i stepped out of the plane i, I get my bag i i see pastor and i say pastor the first thing i said to him pastor we're carrying the dude around me one eleven thousand fold blessing and he goes i know i already got it and i was like what and he said that a few days before he came an angel of the lord flew into his office while he was in prayer and he knew that angel was from us and the angel came and imparted to him that wow i feel the oil in this right now like the angel of the lord is going <laughs> thank you jesus like wow he's going to visit you he's going to do the same thing that he did for pastor and he's going to release the blessing in your household jesus thank you god and that's what that angel did it walked into his house and whoa whew, gosh thank you jesus i feel that electricity of the power of the spirit right now and he's going to release and he released it to the pastor he's going to do the same for you amen and pastor went out and like the next day he's driving home and his wife calls him see they had had this second house this was in the time this was like in two, 2008 when the economy crashed okay maybe 2010 and they had been trying so hard to sell the second house so that they could get some cash flow going and so that they could keep their other house and everything else and his wife called him and said there's somebody who wants to look at the house well now pastor was really had an attitude problem about that house because for years he'd driven all the way it was like hours away from his house and he would meet people and show it to him but nothing would ever happen i mean he showed it to so many people he just was burnt out so when she said to him or somebody that wants to come look at the house he went right into that reaction he forgot you know that an angel had just come and given him the thousand fold blessing and he went right into like that fleshy reaction like you know what i don't care if somebody wants to look at the house i'm not gonna go waste my time and drive all the way over there again and have them say no after all these years of people saying no and he kind of started ranting and ranting like this and his wife cuts in and goes well maybe you should ask god if you should go or not and he's like oh that, that shut him right down right he goes okay yeah you're right I'm, i i'm gonna do that right now so he hangs up the phone and he goes you know what god 
you know how frustrated I am with this house. And you know that I do not want to go there if this guy's not going to buy it, okay? And, or if a deal's not going to be cut. Okay, so don't make me go unless he's going to do it. And God, he's got to do it in five minutes or five minutes. Go in and, and he'll want the deal. And that's it. That's the only way I'll go. And he hears the Lord say, go. So he's like, okay. Right? So he goes over and meets the guy. The guy walks in. And he looks around and he goes, wow, beautiful house on the golf course. It's got wood floors. It's got granite. got a fireplace. I'll take it. It was literally five minutes and it solved his problem that he had been, this burden he'd been carrying on his back for all those years. Okay, it was like the houses were like $350,000. It was a huge thousandfold miracle, right? So he tells me the story and now we're really excited, right? And we told him what happened with us and we're like, Oh, this is amazing. I said, we need a priestess in your church tonight. And he's like, yes. So we go to his church, right? And I get up and I start telling all the stories, right? And all kinds of amazing things start happening, okay? The first guy that was there, he's sitting on the inner aisle of the church. And he's he's got his hand, he's sitting there and I'm preaching my guts out, right? And he's looking at me like this. Going like, yeah, right whatever right he's looking at me so skeptical like later on he said something like oh i felt so sorry for you because i knew you had your theology about deuteronomy 111 wrong but in the end he said i felt so sorry for you that i had 10 bucks in my pocket so i decided to throw it in the bucket so he you know gets up and feeling bad for me because i got it all wrong takes his 10 bucks and throws it in the in the bucket and then walks back the next day a man came up to him that he's never met in his life and says, and says, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I need to write you a check for $10,000. Okay. <laughs> Who had their theology wrong at that point is what I wanted to ask. But it was amazing. Okay, now all these miracles I'm about to tell you, including that one, I can call Pastor Wayne Watkins on the phone right now and put him on the mic and he will confirm that all these really happened, okay? Then there was another couple. The man had worked in a warehouse, like on an assembly line for like a long time, like 20 years, he'd worked faithfully for this company and he got injured on the job, okay? And he had to do like, you know, workman's comp, take off, get treated by the doctor. And then the doctor treated him for a while and then it was like, well, you know, I think you can go back to work, but you're gonna have to like play it a little slow. So he went back to work, but he wasn't totally healed and he ended up, he could not continue working. He had to take more time off. So he took more time off and when he did that the second time, the company fired him. And he was like, wow, I worked for you guys for, you know, 20 years for so faithful. And the first time something happens, I get hurt on your work site and now you're going to do this to me. So they took them to court and they fought it for like years. They fought it and they would fight it and it would get denied and they'd put in another appeal and it would get denied. They put in another appeal. And finally, after one appeal after the other, they got a letter in the mail from the court and said, we're sorry, your claim is denied. This case is totally closed you have no more appeals. So that was like years ago, right? So they're in the meeting that night and I'm telling all these stories, right? So they take the money that they have and they put their faith on it. Their faith got rose up really big and they sewed into the thousand fold blessing. Like that week, within less than a week, they go out to the mailbox one day and there's an envelope there and they open it up and inside there's a check for 40 $5,000 that they received on a case that had been totally closed by the courts. $45,000, okay? All right, and then there was another woman. She had put in for a, uh, a divorce settlement because her husband had left her. He had left her with no money at all. And she was praying, I mean, she had gotten nothing from him. She was praying and praying and praying. She got no response from him, fighting him in the courts, doing everything she can to just get some kind of money out of him. She ends up hearing this message. She sews into the message. And let me see, I wanna make sure I got this right because I don't like to tell any stories unless they are totally exact. And she ends up getting a check after fighting, 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 fighting with no success, no communication, nothing. At, right after she sews, she gets a check for 5,300 bucks, okay? And then there was another woman. Her husband had also left her and she had no skills, no skills at all. She didn't have any job skills, no, hardly any education. She'd been a housewife her whole life. Her husband leaves her, they don't have any money and she doesn't know what she's gonna do, right? So she always, 
wanted to do silk screening as a hobby. So she thought, okay, well, you know, maybe I could do that as a job. You know, I'll go find, you know, some cheap used silk screen machine and see if I can start getting like t-shirt and shirt contracts for businesses. So she goes out, she finds herself this little machine, it's a used machine, she kind of fixes it up, right? And then I come into town. And she hears this message and she gets her face risen up, right? So she sews into it. Well, within that week, she gets a call from the electric company. Now, in that particular area, the electric company is run by the government. Okay, so it would be a government contract if they call if the electric company called you up and asked you to do their shirts. And that's what he did. He said, We would like to give you the contract to do all our employees' t-shirts. And she was like, Oh my gosh, a government contract. This is totally amazing. And she goes, uh, excuse me, but how did you get my number? Because I don't even have cards yet. <laughs> Somehow he had gotten her number and called her. And what's even more amazing than that is, okay, how did he get the number? And he calls a woman that has never had a business before, just started it with a broken down machine. I mean, if you're a governmental agency, you usually go and give a contract like that to somebody who's been in business forever, who has a well-known established, you know, a bunch of customers that are very pleased, but here's the governmental electrical company calling her and giving the contract to her. Okay, totally amazing, totally amazing, right? Okay, and then there was this other woman. She had been left by her husband also. And he had taken everything. I mean, he like disappeared without any type of anything, no explanation, nothing, just disappeared. She's totally broke, right? And he didn't talk to her. He didn't tell her anything. She's totally heartbroken. It was a horrible situation for her, okay? She'd been praying, 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 nothing been happening. I come and show up at the church. She listens to the message. She gets her faith up, right? She's so it's into it. And within that week, these all happen within like a week, okay? That week, she gets a check from him in the mail. When I found out, because Pastor told me what happened, that she had gotten the check, I was like, oh, he, he gave her, he sent her a letter, and he said he was sorry too. He sent her a letter, said he was sorry, and gave her a check. I was like, oh, he sent her the letter? Said he's sorry and gave a check? Good thing, because if he didn't, I would have gone and got that check for, okay? Because that's what kind of anointing I have, all right? So I was uh, super glad for him that he uh, was moved by the Spirit of the Lord to do the right thing. Amen, okay? All right, so then uh, and one more miracle. This one's really cool. It's not the biggest, but it's really fun, okay? There was a woman also in that same church. She's there that night. Right, she hears the message. She sews into it for the thou to get the thousandfold increase. She has this little business downtown in that area. It wasn't a very big city, small area, but she has this little business uh, storefront, and it had been struggling because you know the economy was not doing well at that time. And she went to work like a couple days after the meeting, and the electrical guy showed up. Okay, that is horrible. If you have ever had your electricity sh be, be shut off because you owed money, you know when the electrical guy shows up in person, you're in trouble, okay? Because that's what he did. He came and he said, I came here in person because I came here to collect the money you owe on the electricity. And if you don't give it to me right now, I'm shutting it off. So she goes back in the back and she's got the money that she owes in this little box, this little metal box. Okay, the money that's in there, $540. It's meant for her lease payment for the office space, okay? So she goes and takes that out and gives it to him. He leaves electricity on and he leaves. Okay, and then she's like, after that, she's like, oh God, what am I gonna do? She goes, I, you know, I, that was my lease money. That's the money for my overhead. I'm, I'm going to get kicked out of here. What am I going to do now? And she hears the Lord say this, go, go look in the box. And she goes, no, no, I just took the money out of the box. I, I, it's not in the box, Scott. And he goes, yes, yes, it's in the box. Go look in the box. She goes, no, didn't you hear what I said? I, I just went and took the money out of the box and gave it to the electrical guy. And God goes like this, go look in the box. So she's like, okay. So she goes back there, she opens it up, and God manifested $540 in cash in that empty box. That is so cool, okay? And like I said, I could get on the phone right now and call Pastor Watkins, and he would confirm all these miracles. It was just, it was such an amazing, awesome time. I remember right after that, I said, God, I just want to give this to everybody. It was like, I just want 
everyone to be blessed. I go, what can I do now? And I really felt like the Lord said, go to the poorest churches in Virginia and give it to them. So I did, right? There was this one church. It was a huge old church. It had been there forever. It was right in downtown Richmond. And it was like right where all the homeless people live, where all the poor people live, really, you know, downtrodden neighborhood, people struggling. And so I went there and I was saying this message and I, I knew all the miracles that had already happened because I was still there like when they happened. So I'm there telling the story about the hundred thousand dollar check and about pastor's house miracle and about the money being created in the box and the forty five thousand dollar settlement and I'm preaching it right because I really want these poor people to like have it. So I'm preaching it with all my might right and they're sitting there like this like I have such a party mentality that I can't believe it. They're like Arr. And I'm like, I'm like really trying to drill it in them. Look, what I'm telling you is real. It really happened. The pastor's right here. He can tell you. You've got to believe me that I came here to help you. I didn't come here to get your money because you don't have any money. I came here to give you something. Rise up with your faith. Just take whatever you have, pennies, nickels, dimes, whatever you have in your pocket. And so, because you've got to sow a seed in order to get this increase. And so they were like, okay, you know, and they're reaching in their pocket and they're pulling out their little pennies and dimes and putting them in the offering envelopes and they got their little jingle bag full of change, you know, and they're coming up and, and I am like going crazy, right? I got my team there. I'm down on the floor. I got the bucket there. They're throwing in their, uh, their envelopes and I'm going, thousand fold, thousand fold. I'm decreeing it. I'm going crazy because I want them to have it so bad, right? And they're throwing in their buckets. And then the last guy comes up and he throws in his envelope. And right when he did that, my team stand behind me, starts screaming, ah, I start going crazy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? What, what, what? And they're like, look at that clock. Well, there was this huge, like this big clock in the back of this church, right? Well, when that guy came up, and through the last offering envelope in, the clock turned 111. <laughs> turned 111, right? And so I go crazy, right? I'm like, look, look, the clock just turned 111 when you threw the offering bag in. And the whole church is sitting there, right? And they all turn like this all at once, like to look at the clock, right? And when they turn back, like their faces started changing, like, Suddenly they realize, okay, this lady isn't just preaching crazy stuff. Okay, this is for us? Really? God, wow. And you could see their faces change, right? And they start reaching their pocket, see if they had anything else to sew. And right away, people started getting texts for jobs. Like, okay, we have a job. There's a job off um, opening in 7-Eleven. People started getting miracles right away. I mean... God started moving for those poor people in the church. It was so amazing, right? Okay, when we left too, and God always gives me a sign, like when I preach this message, he'll give me a sign that he's really gonna do it for that church when I leave. And when I left, there was an accident on the corner and they had um, emergency vehicles responding. And in Virginia, uh, they have their vehicles, they number them by the house, where it comes from, like, you know, firehouse one, firehouse two, firehouse three, and then the vehicle number. Well, the vehicles that responded were from house one, vehicles number 11. <laughs> I mean, it was painted huge. One, house one, vehicle 11 on the side of these trucks that came. It was like the emergency God squad came from heaven to bring these guys a blessing. It was so awesome. Okay, so here's the coolest part. Okay, that was like six years ago. Here's the coolest part. It's back. It is back. Okay, I, I mean, it is back so big. In the past four months, I have been seeing 111s everywhere again. I mean, you know, it first started like I'd see it on the clock. I'd walk through the house and, you know, God would sovereignly make me look at the clock. And then, you know, then he would have people like call me right at 111 or important mess text messages come through to me that would come through right at like 111. OK, I mean, I would have the six o'clock news on my TV at home and be walking through the living room right when the weather announcer would say the high today in Phoenix is 111. It was like, it was, it was like everywhere. Okay. I would be going on YouTube, right. To watch a video and I'd find the video and it would be one hour and 11 minutes long. I mean, I, I took pictures of all this stuff. Okay. My, 
my phone is loaded up with pictures. I went to the Harley Davidson store and like bought a bunch of my friends' gifts and it added up to 111. Okay, I got a picture of that receipt too. Okay, I mean, I would be on my running machine. I go on my running machine like every day and every day God would suddenly make me look down at my display board right when I had burned 111 calories up. Okay, I would be watching like worship videos on okay, on my like iPad. This this right here has happened like probably four or five times in the last four months. I'd be watching it and like the phone would ring or I'd have to get up and I'd pause it, go up and take care of whatever I needed to take care of, come back and realize as I look at the screen before I restart it that I stopped it right at one hour and 11 minutes in. I mean, that happened like four or five times. How could that possibly be coincidence, right? I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I took my very good friends out who work for me and are also like my very close friends, the Mulklands, out for John Mulkland's birthday. And when the check came, it was $111.83. Okay, I can't have, tell you how many times this has all happened. I mean, okay, like I went to the airport one day and I saw a board, a notification board that I've never seen before at the gate. I mean, I've never seen this. This board would show you minute by minute how many people were checked in for that flight. Okay. And when I looked up, the moment I looked up at that board, 100, the 111th person had checked in for that flight. Okay. I have been to the airport hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times, and never once even seen a board like that, never seen a board like that since. I was in San Diego like a few weeks ago, and I was flying back home, and as I was getting on the plane, I don't know what made me do this. It was the sovereignty of God, but I handed the guy my ticket to check in, and as I did, I turned around. I mean, I've never done this out of the like 300, 400 flights I've taken, okay? I turned around and looked at his board, and it showed that 111 people were checked in for that flight i mean i was so freaked out i said i'm sorry can i take a picture of your screen is that allowed is that against the tsa rules or something he goes no no that's fine I, he goes so there's something about that number i go oh oh yeah there's something about that number okay i mean i couldn't believe it i, I it has just been everywhere 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 and when i go to meetings and i preach this message oh my gosh miracles happen like right away the same night and then the next day, I mean, people getting jobs, people getting miracle finances, people getting turnarounds, people getting blessings, even the churches that I've gone to. I've gone to some very famous big churches that have been like around forever. And when when I preach this message, they receive the biggest record offering they ever have in the history of their church. I mean, and they've been like having church for like ever and they're and they're getting that kind of blessing. I mean, it was crazy. I went to Texas the other day, and when I walked into the hotel room, I took out all my stuff, took out my phone, and right as I set my phone down the desk, I received my 4,000th, 111th email. Of course, I'm getting a lot more emails now today than I used to. And then this woman comes, she's our ride to the event, comes to pick me up. I get in her car to go to the event, and she's got a sticker on her window, 111. I go, wait, stop, stop, wait. She goes, what's the matter? Is it a bee? Is there a bee or a bug in the car? I'm like, no, you have 111 on your windshield. I, I made her stop. I got out and took a picture of it. And then on the way there to the church, this huge truck pulls in front of us and it's got on the back door one single thing, a gigantic one, a gigantic one. We're following a, a truck, a supply truck with a gigantic one. This is crazy, okay? This is crazy. All right, I mean, and then this was the kicker. Okay, then this was the kicker. I'm like, wow, okay, this message has come back with a vengeance. It is on again. People, it, you know, it runs in seasons. People are really getting it. And then like th three, four weeks ago, we got another $100,000 donation. Okay, so look, I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting and all that. To me, when that happened, it was like God saying, this is real. <laughs> this is real. I'm really doing this. This, this $100,000, the second check is to again confirm you're really carrying this. It's really for God's people. It's not just for you. 
I'm really want to, I'm really doing it because my people need the blessing, not the 30, the 60, the 100 anymore. They need the thousandfold because I got big things planned for my kingdom on this planet and my people need to be empowered with wealth in order to spread my gospel. And I just felt that so big come upon me when we got the second donation of that size. It really confirmed that this is God's will for this moment right now. Okay, amen. So that's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to impart it to you first. And then we're going to get everything in you out of the way so it can manifest. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know, uh, Amy, do you think we should have some music in this so we can really pray into it? Yes. Yes. Also, do you want to address a couple people have expressed that this sounds a little weird? Oh, they did. They said this. A lot of, a lot of people, many, many people are saying 111 and all that. So they are on, they get it, but maybe you just want to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Look. Remember what the Deuteronomy scripture says. Let's go back to scripture. Okay. It sounded weird to me too. When I when God said, I'm going to do the Deuteronomy 111, it was like, okay, let me read it. Let me look at it. It says, the Lord God of your fathers, may he make you a thousand times more than you are and bless you as he has promised you. Okay. Wow. All right. So when I saw that, I was unsure too. I was like, that can't be. You know, a thousand fold, that can't be. It's too crazy. It's too big. But honestly, what? Do we believe that nothing is impossible for God? Because that's what the Bible says, right? Okay, so I remember looking up every single word in that scripture to see, okay, is this a spiritual blessing? Is this a financial blessing? What is it? Right? I looked up every single word. And when I got to the word thousand, it says, make you a thousand times more than you are. Okay, I got to the word thousand. It actually means, and you can check my word. Go to the Strong's. Check my work, okay? You can go blueletterbible.com and click on the lexicon there and just it'll let you click onto every word. The word thousand there means the numeral, the number 1000, but if you click in the etymology, it'll take you to the Strong's number that's connected to that word 1000 and it means cattle, oxen, farming, possessions. It's like, wow, that was money in the ancient times. That was money in the ancient times. It was their herds, their, their fields, their cattle, their, their sheep. That's how they made money. That's how they ate. That's what they traded with. And so this is definitely not just a spiritual blessing. It is a financial increase. Okay. And, and the thing is, is like God came to me to give it to me. I didn't go to him and say, I want this or this or this. He came to me in his sovereign time and told me, this is what I'm going to do. And then he did it first with our first hundred thousand dollar gift. And then with our second one, not to mention everything else that's happened. So here's what it is. When I first heard it, it was too big for me to grasp too. It was, it was too big for me to grasp and, and I couldn't believe it, but God helped me. He really wanted to not only do it for us, because we need to be empowered with wealth so we could help all the prisoners that we help in all the thousands of prisons that we serve. But he wanted other people to be empowered with it too. So what he did for me is, that's when he started showing me the 111s all over the place, the 111s all over the place. And that, every time I saw one after the other, I mean, crazy stuff, my DVDs getting stuck and my emails freezing up my phone when the 111th email coming in. It built my faith up higher and higher and higher. And that's what he's probably doing with you. A lot of you are chatting in right now, right? And saying you're seeing the 111. Yes. That is God building your faith for the impossible. He wants you to start going, wow, this can't be coincidence. There's no way I could keep getting a text at 111 and then a phone call at 111 and then seeing the clock at 111 and having stuff everywhere where I go, 111. I mean, I was seeing billboards with 111 on it. I was seeing stuff everywhere. God is building your faith too to receive it. And that's when you just have to, like every time you see that sign, go, wow, okay, God, I know what you're doing. You're helping me. You're helping me believe for the impossible. And I receive it. It's like that man that had the son that nobody could deliver him of those demons. And he said, and Jesus said, you know, he said, uh, I do believe, help my unbelief. <laughs> I love that statement. He was saying, I really want to believe and I do believe, but at the same time, I still have doubt in me and everything else. I love that story. You can do the same thing. I do believe, but help my unbelief. And God will, 
my, you know, giving you dreams about 111 and waking you up at 111 and having the car license plate in front of you while you're driving down the road, say 111 on it. You know, it's really him showing his goodness to you. Amen. So let's, let's pray right now because this is a real impartation. This is real. Okay. And people are getting it wherever I go places, people are getting this impartation and stuff is really happening. So I'm going to pray with you right now. Amen. I don't even know. Oh, this isn't even on anymore. But if we have to do it without music, we will. Amen. Yeah, it's not going to turn on, Amy. So we're going to do it without it. No, I can. Uh, we'll just. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it's not going on, but we're just going to pray anyway. Okay. Just pray with me. Okay. Just say, God, help my unbelief. I believe. Help my unbelief. Show me that this is for me too. That this isn't just for Katie Souza and other people. That this is for me too. And this can happen for me. You know, I stepped out on a limb to teach you guys this. Knowing people would go, oh, you're just a prosperity, financial, whatever person. You know, you're just going after people's money. You know what? I went to the poorest churches in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, to give this away, knowing they didn't have a dime to give me. Okay, I did a little tour of like five or six of the poorest churches because I know this is real and God wants his people to be prospered right in the middle of the economy crash, right in the middle of where everything else is going crazy. This is for all of us. We are together in this fight in this battle to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And part of that is being financially stable and prosperous so that we can spread the gospel. Because it takes money to spread the gospel. It takes money to do flyers. It takes money to do web streams. It takes money to do TV shows. It takes money to travel on a missionary trip somewhere. And God is saying now, I am going to empower my people with wealth, with wealth so that they can do all those things. Amen. Now, here's the thing. You do have to sow a seed, but I'm not asking you to sow a seed to me. You need to sow a seed to wherever the Holy Spirit tells you to sow. I don't even care. You have to obey Holy Spirit. If Holy Spirit tells you to sow to that church or that ministry over there, then that's exactly what you need to do. I didn't come over here to convince you to try to sow your seed into this ministry. If God tells you to, then you need to. But you just need to obey Holy Spirit. Because, see, you cannot have a harvest without a seed. It's like those poor people in those churches in Virginia. I said, pull the pennies out of your pocket. Pull, if you got a nickel, throw it in the bag. Just get some sort of seed in the ground. Because any farmer knows that if you want to have a harvest, you've got to put seed in the ground. Amen. So you need to listen carefully to Holy Spirit right now. I'm not trying to wrangle anything out of you. It's Holy Spirit that's going to tell you what to do at this moment. He's going to tell you where to sow. He's going to tell you how much to sow. And then Holy Spirit is going to start confirming his message. He's going to start confirming this message. He's going to start giving you more 111s. You're going to start seeing them all over the place. Your faith is going to grow bigger and bigger. And then finally, the manifestation is going to break. It's going to break loose, just like it did for us. This is the second time for me having this visitation happen. So I got big faith for it now. <laughs> what I used to be thinking to myself was no way impossible. Now I'm like, oh yeah, are you kidding? Because I've seen so many miracles for so many people from this. I mean, money manifesting in a box? <laughs> the exact money she needed for her lease payment? I mean, a $45,000 check to a couple that a case that fought for for years and was closed and they still got a check after they sewed. I mean, I've seen the miracle. So my faith is super high for this. And what I'm trying to do with this special web stream is raise your faith up because God is tired of us being broke and unable to pursue our mission. Right now you might have a ministry and you got people that need money, that need money. You have employees and they need a raise. They need money to continue. You need money to, so you can continue to pay them. And God is saying, I'm going to give it to you. 
I'm going to give it to you. I'm done with you being stuck in the place you've been stuck in. I'm done having you be ineffective to be able to bring my message. I'm done uh, with you not being able to print your books and print your flyers so you can pass out materials to people, materials that will help them change their life, bring them to Christ, that will change uh, your neighborhood, your city, your state. God is bringing this for this reason. Come on, let's, let's ask Holy Spirit right now to talk to us because that's the big key right there, Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, come right now. Come right now and speak to each person individually. You tell them exactly what you want them to do. If they're not supposed to do anything, Holy Spirit, you tell them. And they don't have to do anything. But if they're supposed to so, Holy Spirit, you tell them where, you tell them how much, and then you give them the strength, the courage, the faith to obey so they can see their harvest. Lord, we just thank you that you're going to do it right now. Holy Spirit, you're going to speak to people clearly right now. So let's just, let's just get still for a minute and listen to the Lord. Now, if you heard something from the Holy Spirit, chat in, will you? Chat in. Let us know. How are you feeling now? Is Holy Spirit speaking to you? Is your faith rising up? There we go. We got a little music here. God, we just thank you right now. You're tired of seeing your people in a place where they cannot continue to be about your business. Thank you for speaking to every single person on this web stream right now. Thank you that you're going to direct and guide them, that I, they're not going to do anything because of me or, or I'm not telling them what to do, that you're going to directly speak to their hearts and guide them. Just like you did to me when I first received this revelation. It was amazing. I'm so full of faith and so excited about it because of all the fruit I've seen. And I also sowed. When you told me about this and you told me to plant seed in the ground, I did exactly what you told me to do. Even when I was afraid, I just did it afraid. I did it afraid, but I knew that you're a faithful God and you, you don't lie and that you always keep your word. And if you've been showing them 111s or 1111s, then you're already at work in their lives. And they already are having proof, supernatural signs and wonders that you want to do it for them too. And for those of, of you that are watching that haven't seen your 111s or 1111s yet, right now in the name of Jesus, I decree that God will begin to show you those numbers, that you'll start seeing them and you're going to feel that excitement. You're going to feel that faith bubbling up inside of you to receive it. Thank you, God. Give them their confirmations, Lord. Show them that you mean business. Show them that this promise isn't just for Katie Souza and other people that they've heard stories about, but it's for them too. Yes, and get their, get their courage up, Lord. That's the thing. I remember being afraid to sow. I do. I remember being afraid. But God just said, I, I am a God that keeps his word. I am not a man that I should lie. And I stepped out in faith and I did it afraid. And God brought such huge blessings, not only to us, but everywhere we went to preach this message. I'm just so grateful. Now remember, God will speak to you right now. He'll tell you where to sow. He'll tell you how much. But don't flake out on it. Because I can remember when God told me to sow. And I'd be like, okay, God, I'm going to do that. Right? And then I didn't. The next day went by and I didn't sow. And the next day went by and I didn't sow. And God says, you know, the longer you wait to keep your word, the longer I'll wait to keep mine. 
He goes, you got to put that seed in the ground in order for it to, to sprout and grow so you can harvest it. It won't work unless you put the seed in. I had hesitated and hesitated and put it off. And finally, I kept my word to the Lord and planted that seed. And he brought the harvest. So, Father, I just thank you that they're going to, you're going to speak clearly to everyone and they're going to obey and they're not going to put it off. They're not going to forget about it after the excitement of the message is over. They're going to get it and they're going to do it. And then you are going to make it manifest for them. Thank you, God. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Hmm. Let's just wait 30 more seconds and let's just praise the Lord in this time for what he's going to do. Father, we thank you. I am so grateful. I am so grateful for what you've done for us, much less what you're going to do. I'm so grateful that you didn't just do it for me and my ministry, but that you gave me the ability to give it to other people. I'm so, so grateful for that. I'm so thankful, Lord, that you made this revelation impartable. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you. I praise you for your goodness. I praise you for your generosity, God, your extraordinary generosity. I just give you the glory and the honor that you would do the impossible for your people in this season, even when the economy looks so bleak, when everyone's so afraid, but you would take care of your people. You would make sure we have everything we need, not only to live life abundant, but to be able to proclaim your kingdom throughout the earth. We worship you, we exalt you, we give you the honor and the glory, and we thank you so much, God, for who you are, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And we praise you, God, and we thank you. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus' name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, don't forget, get your seed in the ground wherever God told you to plant it. Amen. Get, make sure you get your seed in the ground, that you don't flake out and, and hesitate. Otherwise, you will not get your harvest. Amen. I'm going to put that music on pause, and I'm going to now go to the second part of this. These two revelations go hand in hand. Wherever I've been preaching them, um, and churches where I've been going to, it was like the combination of these two revelations have caused full manifestation. Because I think a lot of times people will get a financial impartation that they're able to give to the body of Christ, but then they don't remove anything on the people that might be hindering them. What is that? Right now in this season, God has shown me a strategy of the enemy to secretly install a demonic power on people's finances, their churches, their businesses, their checkbooks, their savings accounts, their investments. The enemy has come in with a stealth, camouflaged assignment that we don't even realize is there. He's installed enemy forces upon our finances to squeeze them out, to prevent us from breaking our debt, and to prevent us from being able to increase in our businesses, ministries, in our savings, in our investments, and all of that. And he showed me what that is. I'm going to read to you from Luke 10, verse 17. And it goes like this. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said to the, unto them, I beheld Satan fall falling like lightning from the sky. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any wise harm you. Okay, so here Jesus is saying that he's giving us power to trample on, quote, demons, serpents and scorpions and nothing shall in any wise harm us. Okay, so we're, when he's talking about us being able to trample on a serpent, is he talking about us being able to like crush serpents in the natural? and have power over them and their venom, or like a bite that we might get from a snake. Well, I think that's part of it. I mean, we see 
proof of that in Paul's story in Acts 28 when he shipwrecked on the island of Malta. Okay, what happens? He, get, he gets bitten by a very poisonous viper, but he shakes it off and the Bible said he was unharmed. And the, the islanders, the local people on that island, were shocked because they knew that that particular snake was deadly in its venom. But here's Paul, he had total dominion over the venom. Over the venom. So there, right there, is an example of someone in the Bible having dominion over snakes in the natural. But I think when Jesus is talking about serpents here and us having authority to trample on them, that he's actually more, more referring to serpents that are really demons that manifest in the form of snakes. Now, why do I say that? Well, look at this statement that Jesus makes in context with the rest of the story. He just sent out the 70 on missionary work. They went around from town to town, the healing the sick, driving out demons, you know, uh, cleansing lepers. And when they return... They said, the 70 returned and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So the subject that they're talking about is demons being submitted to them in the name of Jesus. And that's when Jesus said, behold, I've given you power to trample on snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall anything wise harm you. So in context, Jesus is actually referring to these snakes and scorpions being demonic manifestations, demonic manifestations. Amen. Now think about it. What was the very first demonic manifestation in the Bible? It was Satan as a snake in the garden, a serpent. Now, what's Satan called in Revelation 12? The dragon, that old serpent. So it's obvious that Satan can take on the form of a serpent as well as some of his ser servants underneath him, snakes and scorpions. Amen. Now, why is this so important? What are these snakes trying to do to us? Well, remember what Jesus said. He said, Behold, I give you the power to trample on snakes and scorpions and all over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any wise harm you. Okay, so obviously these snakes and these scorpions are out to harm us, to do us harm. They do us harm in all kinds of ways. They can hurt our physical bodies, cause sickness. They can harm our relationships. They can cause our children to be harmed. They can harm us in our finances even. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Amen. Now, did you know that Jesus actually, as part of the Great Commission, told us that we are to deliver, to remove snakes off of anything they're attached to? It's true. I want you to listen to the Great Commission in Mark 16. This is amazing to me, okay? I want you to make sure you hear this. This is Jesus talking. He says, go. This is the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will not be condemned. And these signs, everybody say these signs, will follow those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. They will drink anything deadly and it will be uh, in no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Okay. This is crazy. All right. I've heard people preach on the Great Commission many, many times. And they say, yes, Jesus has called us to go out. And we're supposed to preach the gospel to everybody in the world. We're supposed to baptize people. We're supposed to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We're supposed to cast out demons. They preach all that. But, they, oh, but I rarely hear anybody say this part in the middle. No, I never hear anybody preaching on this part where Jesus says, you're also supposed to take up serpents. He's actually commanded us in the Great Commission, we're supposed to take up serpents. What does that mean? The word take up there in the Greek is the Greek word iro. It means this. Look, I'm quoting from the Strong's, right? It means to take off or away what is attached to anything. To take off and away what is attached to anything. Meaning there are serpents that are attached to stuff. And we're supposed to take them up. We're supposed to take them up and remove them from whatever they're attached to. And that's actually part of the Great Commission. Okay, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you pulled a snake off of somebody? Just asking. When's the last time you pulled a snake off of somebody's house, somebody's back, somebody's body, somebody's finances? Because according to this, they are attached to, quote, anything. And we're supposed to take them up. We're supposed to pull them off. There, it says they're attached and we're supposed to take up these serpents and remove them from anything they're attached to. And this is part of the Great Commission. You know what? We're not fulfilling that part of the Great Commission. 
We're going out and preaching the gospel to all the world. We're casting out demons. We're laying hands on the sick. But it specifically says here, we're supposed to take up serpents. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. But that to me is shocking because we don't realize that these demonic serpents are attached to a lot of things in our life. See, snakes are like um, masters of camouflage. They can hide. They can sneak up on people. You could have a snake, like what you're walking through the forest or the desert. You could have a snake like a few feet away from you and you wouldn't even know unless they start rattling their tail or something. They are the masters of camouflage. I have seen serpents attached to all kinds of stuff. I had a woman, she had this disease where water was pouring out of her eyes. When serpents came off of her, her eyes dried up and uh, she didn't have to, I don't believe she had to have the surgery anymore. She was scheduled for surgery, but her eyes dried up and she was totally healed. Another woman named Pat, it was her birthday when she showed up at a meeting of mine. She had a huge cancer lump in her breast, like the size of a walnut, stage four cancer. A serpent comes off of her body during the preach and the, the walnut sized tumor instantly and completely disappears. It was so amazing. Her husband was there. He's a super tall guy. She's a super short, cute little woman. He likes to pick her up, squeeze her, and he hadn't been able to do that since the breast cancer because it would hurt too bad. When she got healed, he came running up to the stage, picked her up and squeezed her with all his might. And when he set her down, she looked up at him and she said, oh, and I can't believe it didn't even hurt. And he cried his eyes out. I mean, as I've been teaching this revelation about these serpents, I have been shocked about what they're attached to. It says that's, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take them off or away anything that they're attached to. And I've been surprised at what they've been doing to people. I mean, there was a woman at one of my meetings. She had been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, bone on bone in her knees. And she was in agony all the time. She got the diagnosis after she bought a three-story townhouse. And every night she would have to drag herself up the stairs, crawling up the stairs to get to her bedroom, crying the whole time. When serpents came off of her legs, she was jumping up and down, pain-free, up on the stage, crying, screaming. I mean, you knew she was healed. You could tell this woman just got a supernatural miracle. And it was when I was teaching about the serpents and she saw serpents come off her legs. Now, who would have ever guessed? See, I would have never guessed that a diagnosis of bone on bone and rheumatoid arthritis would really be a demonic serpent harming us, harming this, harming a woman. Okay. And I can go on and on. I mean, I've seen people with deaf ears open up. I had a deaf left ear and I, a serpent came out of my left ear and God gave me the scripture in Psalm 58, four, it said, Oh, you deaf adder spirit, one that blocketh the ear. And when that serpent came out, this ear had always been slightly deaf and now it hears better than this ear. I mean, I have seen some crazy miracles when the word that Jesus said about, behold, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall in any wise harm you. And behold, go into all the world. This is my commission to you. Preach the gospel, drive out demons, lay hands on the sick and they will recover and take up serpents. I have seen so many stunning miracles happen. And people say, well, I don't get it. How, how are these, uh, these, these spirits connected to us? Well, I mean, there's so many things. You know, Leviathan is a very powerful spirit, very powerful, very evil spirit. Well, in Isaiah 27, it says that he's the twisting, fleeing serpent. Okay, he's a really big snake. That's one of the many forms that he takes. Okay, and in Job 41, it says that he's the king over the children of pride. When we have pride in our life, it can allow spirits, snakes, supernatural serpents to come like Leviathan and to afflict us. I mean, even like a religious spirit. Do you remember what, the, what Jesus called the Pharisees? Oh, you brood of vipers. When we have a critical religious spirit, when we are criticizing people, judging them in our hearts, looking at a, you know, a, a teacher on TV and going, oh, well, that, that person's crazy, or listening to your pastor up on the, on the stage and going, I can't believe he said that, or, or judging a person next to you in the, in the church, uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe they dress like that, or whatever. When we have a religious spirit, 
It's, we can be actually attacked by a serpent because Jesus called the Pharisees, oh, you brood of vipers. It's amazing. If you've never uh, heard my teaching, the serpent and the soul, you need to get it because it will really start explaining to you um, all about these demonic serpents and what they do. They give you cancer. They ruin your marriages. They cause twisting of communications. They break up churches. Uh, they cause all kinds of disease and disorder. And they also mess with your finances. I'm going to read scripture to you in Job 20. Listen to this. This is verse 15 through 17. He has swallowed down his ill-gotten riches and he shall vomit them up again. God will cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of asps, that's a snake, which ill-gotten wealth contains. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not look upon rivers, the flowing streams of honey and butter, to enjoy his wealth. This scripture right here connects people having ill-gotten Wealth, which means, you know, you could cheat your boss. Maybe you're taking toilet paper home at night or pens and pencils, or maybe you've been, you know, skimming a little money off of the, off of the, uh, what do you call that? The, the little spare money that people get. What's the name of it? How do you know? Uh, you know, when you are, uh, have money in the box and people can go buy gas or stuff with it at, at the office. What's it called? Oh, petty, cash. petty cash. Maybe you're skimming a little money off the petty cash or, Maybe you've been doing something even worse. Or maybe you used to do that in the past. And you had some sort of ill-gotten riches. Maybe they didn't charge you for something at the grocery store the other day. And you knew it, but you didn't say anything. You thought, oh, this is my blessing from God. <laughs> You're right. And you walked out of the store. Or maybe, you know, you, you, got, you got issued a double check one time. But you didn't bother to tell anyone. Or maybe you haven't been giving your offerings or maybe, you know, uh, you have been getting some money, a little money on the side for doing a little business that might be having a little illegalness to it, you know, not fully, uh, not a legit um, undertaking. Those ill-gotten riches, according to this, said that you'll vomit them up again, that they'll, that they'll have, that you'll end up sucking the poison of asps, that a viper's tongue will slay you, and that you will not look upon the flowing streams of honey and butter to enjoy your wealth. We have to realize serpents are attached to our money. Now, I want you to listen to this story because this is what led me to this big revelation that has brought huge freedom to people and churches all over the country, okay? I had a friend of mine call me one night to ask me some advice because I'm somewhat of a snake expert, okay? She called me up to ask me some advice and she said that she had seen one of her friends, this particular friend had had like a curse on their finances their whole life. I mean, every single business endeavor this person had ever tried to undertake had ended up in a total debacle, total um, a mess, falling through, money being owed, lawsuits happening against the business. I mean, and one business endeavor after the other became just collapsed and became a, a total scramble, a total mess. And this person, it was just like they were cursed with their money and they couldn't figure out what it was. Well, my friend said she saw one night while they were driving the car together, she saw a big green python on this person. And she called me to ask me what it was. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to guess. I'm not sure. So I'd like to pray into it. So that night I went before the Lord and I said, you know, Lord, I don't want to give them any ill advice. And this, I know you want to break whatever it is off, off of this person's finances. So I really need a word from you. Give me a word so I'll know exactly what it is. And I heard the word in my mind, gains. When I looked it up in the Bible, here's the scripture it was in. It was, it was in Acts 16. Now listen to it. And it came to pass that as we went to prayer, this is talking about Paul and Silas going to prayer, a certain damsel possessed, possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gains by soothsaying. Okay, now let's stop right there. Here's a woman. She's following around Paul and Silas, okay? She is a, she's got a spirit of divination on her, and that spirit actually brings her masters much gains much financial, ill-gotten wealth. 
through her skill that she's gotten from this spirit of divination. Now, if you go to your Strong's Concordance right now and you look up that word divination, it has one word as its meaning. You know what it means? Python. That's right. It was a serpent. Wow. It was a serpent, a python snake that was on this woman who had these skills of divination and soothsaying and it was that serpent, that python serpent that was on this woman that, quote, brought her masters much financial gain. The snake that was on her, the python snake that was on her, was in charge of the finances. Okay, now I'll continue the story. It says, this same followed Paul and us crying, saying, these men are servants of the Most High God, which show us the way unto salvation. Wow, that sounds like a really God-like thing to say, doesn't it? Wow, these are guys that are going to show us the way to God. That sounds like well, something, a really godly thing that somebody would say, right? But it's a snake that's saying it. Why? Because this snake appears to be very godly. It can attach itself to churches and appear very godly, and the churches won't even know it's there because, remember, snakes are masters of camouflage. They sneak up on you. Pythons are known to sneak up on people or animals or whatever their prey is so fast they don't even know they're there. They drop down on you, wrap around on you, and before you know it, you are being squeezed to death and then consumed and eaten. They're like speedy masters of camouflage that just assault you in a second without you even realizing it. Well, that's what the serpent is. This serpent was speaking through this woman uh, to Paul and Silas. Oh, these men are here to show you the way to the Most High God. That sounds so godlike. These serpents love to implant themselves on believers, on ministries, on businesses, on churches, and they appear godlike, saying godlike things, but they're really hiding. They're squeezing out your means for your gains. They're in charge of the money. Okay, amen. And it says that she did this for many days and Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out in that very hour. So Paul cast that python out. Now here's what's, I love this, super cool about it. It says that she did that for many days before Paul got it. It says she did this for many days and then Paul being grieved finally, finally cast this, this spirit out. I've been going to churches and there has been pythons wrapped around every single church I visited in the last four months. And the churches didn't even know it. They didn't even know it. I wouldn't have known it unless God had showed me this revelation, right? Paul didn't know it. He said she did that for many days before he actually snapped to it and said, wow, something's going on here. I'm feeling grieved in my spirit. It's like there's something wrong, but we just can't put our finger on it. You know why? Because these serpents are the masters of camouflage. They're sneaky. You can walk through the desert, they'd be two feet away from you and you wouldn't even know it. Unless they start rattling their tail and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, too late. Right. Okay, so Paul took a minute to figure it out. And so are these other people. I took a minute to figure it out. These churches are taking a minute to figure it out. Okay, and it says that Paul, he finally got it. He commanded that serpent come out of her. It came out. Now, check this out. It says, and, oh, I'm missing verse 19. Whoa, where'd it go? All right, somebody needs to get it for me. Oh, here it is. Next verse, it says, and when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone. Remember, he gave me the word gains. It's the second time it's used in that chapter. When the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and threw them into the marketplace where they beat them. <laughs> they stripped their clothes, commanded they be beaten, laid many stripes on them, and then cast them into prison. So, see, what happened was, is Paul cast that python, because that's what it was. Because that's what that word divination means. Cast the python out of that woman. And then the same spirit that was working in her was actually controlling her masters. They got angry. They got angry. And it says that they came. And when they saw the means of their gains was gone, that's why they were angry. Because that serpent was controlling the money. It was bringing in the illegal gains. It was controlling the money. When they saw that their means of their gains was gone, they got so angry, they dragged Paul and Silas where? Into the marketplace to beat them. That's what the snake is doing. It's in control of the money. It's acting very Christian-like. 
so it can blend in and be camouflaged. These guys are come here to show you the way of the Most High God. And, when it, and, and it drags you into the marketplace. That's the place where your business is. That's a place where your projects are at. That's a place where your ministry is at. And it beats you out in the open in front of everyone. You start losing your place. You start going down in your finances. You start losing your employees. You, you, start, you have to shut your doors. You have to cut back. You can't continue to do uh, the, the vision and the ministry God has called you to do because this thing drags you out into the marketplace and takes the means of your righteous gains and then imprisons you just like it did for Paul and Silas. Beats you and imprisons you. When I got this that night, after my friend called, I went in direct prayer for like all, all night, overnight. I was praying for God to remove that spirit and the spirit of the Leviathan off of people. And I stayed up and prayed and prayed and prayed. And then in the morning, I get a phone call from my media buyer. Okay, he's the same man that was the media buyer for Joyce Myers for 15 years. He calls me and he's in Texas with an apostle named Ed Salvoso, who's just an amazing man of God. He's, uh, he's over Harvest Evangelism and the International Transformation Network. He's got a worldwide ministry. He's just an awesome man. And my friend uh, calls me and says, I'm here with Ed Salvoso and they are interceding right now with their entire staff against Python and Leviathan. And I'm like, you're kidding. I've been doing that all night. God is really exposing this spirit right now. And he's removing the spirit from the church. So he puts them, I put him on speaker, and now I'm in their prayer meeting. They're in Texas, and I'm in their prayer meeting. And I am going for it. I am interceding with them. I'm going crazy. And I could feel the power, man. I could just feel the intercession just hitting against these hidden serpents that the enemy has, secret, has secretly installed in our churches and our businesses and our finances and our homes and everything else. And we don't even know they're there because they're so sneaky, right? And I could feel the power of the inter intercession. And I went into a vision. I saw this church and I knew when I saw the church that it not only represented our ministry, but it represented churches all over the country and the world. And I saw this church and I walked up to it and there was this iron door that had been totally locked and nobody could get open. But God had given me the key. And I opened up this door and as it flung open, I heard the Lord like almost shout. He said, stand back. And I flung myself against the building wall right as this huge python came slithering out down the hallway and out of the church and away from the building. And the Lord says, the python has left the building. <laughs> and when I came out of that, I knew that that python was on our ministry and God had removed it. And that I was not only called to get it off of our ministry, but to go around and get it off of other people's. Now, interestingly enough, let me tell you this. This is why these two, the 111 impartation and this healing activation and revelation about the serpents go together. After that happened, I had been seeing 111s for months at that point, months and months. And I've been going to churches and I've been seeing things happen already and, and we've been happening. It was after I got the Python off of our ministry that we got the second $100,000 check. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know these things are connected because see, you can have a financial impartation and, and be released and it's real and it's viable, but you got to get rid of the things that are in the spirit in the demonic realm that will block it from totally manifesting. You've got to have both. Now check this out. I'll prove it to you. Shortly after that, I went to um, Dr. Francis Miles Church. Do you know who Dr. Francis Miles? He's an amazing man of God. He has been on Sid Roth quite a few times. He has an awesome revelation about the order of Melchizedek. He is a super intelligent, amazing person. I know him and his wife personally. They're just incredible. And they gave me the privilege of going to speak in their church. And I preached the 111 message that I preached earlier and... I taught them about the Python and how it's wrapped around businesses, churches, savings accounts, your pocketbook, your bills, that it's secretly there uh, and it's controlling the means of your gains. Okay. And I taught on that and 
And Dr. Miles got up on stage with me and we began to intercede with the entire church against Python on the church and on everybody individually as, you know, on their savings accounts and their investments, etc. And Dr. Miles had a vision. He saw a huge red Python wrapped around his church. So then I had everyone stand up and we began to repent for anything we had in common. And we began to release the fire of God and we began to unwind the serpent. We, we marched around counterclockwise as in going back in time around the church to remove the serpent from the church. We did that like three times. Everybody in the whole congregation did it. And as we did the final lap, we got up on stage and Dr. Miles gets a text at that moment. He gets a text from Africa. His dad texts him to say, I can't believe it. I just got favor with one of the local African chiefs here and was able to secure an oceanfront property for you for a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Okay, that oceanfront property. He, he's calling it his retirement, his retirement place to go in his homeland. This is incredible. Okay, remember I had taught both the 111 and then we had removed the Python that was preventing the 111 from manifesting. Okay, and then that happened. Okay, now check this out. So I go to Texas to this wonderful church in Tyler, Texas with Dr. Jerry and his wife, Miss Martha, wonderful people. They have some amazing speakers come to their church. Like they've had Lisa Bevere and um, Kenneth Copeland's wife, Gloria, and I mean some, uh, and uh, Marilyn Hickey's daughter, Sarah. I mean, there's been some incredible speakers at this church. It was such an honor for me to be able to go to this church, okay? And I taught on this very strange, you know, in part, uh, um, revelation about the snakes and the serpents. And at first everybody's looking at me like, I'm crazy, right? But then the more I began to teach the word, and tonight I haven't been able to present it all to you, so I hope you do get the teaching, serpent and the soul. But I began to teach it, and the more I did, pretty soon, I mean, the people went from being like, what is she talking about, to like cheering and getting miracles and moving in the activation. And on the last day, my last session, I also did the 111 impartation. And right after that, I followed it with this teaching about the Python and how it's in charge of our gains. And it takes us out into the marketplace and beats us in front of everybody, our businesses, our ministries, taking a beating in the marketplace and then imprisons us. And I began to teach this. And as I walked up on the stage, as we did, a, we did laps around the church, I saw the biggest green python I'd ever seen and it was wrapped around their whole facility. They have like 36 acres there with this beautiful buildings, like $36 million worth of buildings. And it was wrapped around their whole facility. And Pastor, uh, Dr. Jerry had been telling me, you know, that their numbers were down, their attendances were down, their memberships were down, everything was down. And they were really taking a hit and they didn't know what it was from. And I s got up on stage and I saw this fast vision of this python and it just had started to move. It was like it had been there just wrapped around everything, comfortable as can be, like it was sunning itself in the sun for a long time, but we had awakened it by our intercession. And so when I left, I had to leave her um, quickly because I had to get into an airplane. And I told Dr. Jerry, I need to call you because we've awakened it and now we need to get rid of it. And I just love their heart. This church is the most amazing church ever. I called them a few days later and I said, I think for nine days you need to, you know, put fire on the church and repent for anything you have in common with the Python and unwind it. And they did it. They did it. They showed up every day for like nine days and they did it. And I just was on the phone with him like, two nights ago and he had the most he talked to me for 45 minutes with testimonies about what happened that they went and they marched around they were decreeing fire to burn up the chaff they were repenting they were doing everything I said they were unwinding the python and people were seeing it come off and then headed towards the property line and then they had a breakout they had like a huge turnout for their Halloween event where they offer an option to Halloween at their church a huge turnout like 4,000 people came they had oh my gosh they had so many people they had people like hundreds of people each night coming into the church out of nowhere and getting saved born again like every night for like almost two weeks I think it was they had miracle after miracle and then um, Dr. Cherry was supposed to preach uh, one of the Sunday mornings during the midst of this nine days, right? And he had a visitation from heaven. He had like the, the 
cloud of witnesses show up on his stage and he was so overcome and undone by this visitation, he was stuck to his chair, bawling. He couldn't even get up to preach. They had to carry him out at the end of the meeting. He said he hadn't, it was just like one of the most major visitations he's ever had in his life. And it came after they got the python off the church, okay? And then the next day they came back and healing miracles started happening that had never happened before. Okay, one woman had uh, horrible back pain. She had. Uh, some sort of a coating or uh, a lining in her uterus that when she had gotten an examination they thought was cancerous. So they want, they were going to take a biopsy of it because they were so worried. Well, the fire God hit her during this time. When she went back to the doctor, the, the lining was so perfect. They couldn't even find a spot to take a biopsy from. And there's like, we don't know what happened, but what we saw before is gone. A man with a heart problem, the worship team leader, the fire it hit him. It was his father. He had pain in his heart all the time. He laid hands on his father, and the fire shot through him, and the pain is totally gone. He's been healed of the heart problem. I mean, they've just had miracle after miracle. But it happened after the python was removed. And the last thing that Dr. Jerry told me was is that one of his people in the worship team saw a vision of pinatas stuffed full of money over everybody's head and there was angels ready to break the pinatas so that the money could fall upon them. Okay, I want you to think about that. That's the 111 blessing combined with removing the python. We've got to get this python off of our spirit, off of our church, excuse me, our church, our business, our ministry. Like I said, when I removed the python of our ministry, that's when we got the $100,000, the second $100,000 check. It was like the impartation for the 111 was there, but there was something blocking it. And I feel called. That's why I'm doing this. I feel so called to give this impartation to everyone. Amen. I want to know what time it is so I know how much time I have. About 7.30. 7.30. Okay. We're going to work on it right now on getting rid of it for you. Amen. I know we're going long, but I told you this was going to be a two-hour um, web stream because I wanted to make sure we did both of these things that we not only did the 111 impartation but that we got rid of the serpent that's controlling your gains amen and stopping them down squeezing them preventing you from increasing amen what do we have to do to get rid of these serpents well for one we need to repent of anything we have in common with them Okay, I mean, there's stuff that we've done with our finances, sins that we've done. You know, maybe we skimmed a little here, cheated a little there. Maybe we have it in our bloodline. Maybe, you know, somebody in our family used to gamble. Maybe, you know, uh, we used to gamble. Maybe we haven't been tithing right. Maybe we haven't been stewarding our money right. Maybe we've been, you know, spending money that we shouldn't be spending on things that we shouldn't be spending it on. There are areas where we've let that serpent in. And sometimes that serpent has been there for years. And years and years so we need to repent for that we need to apply the power of the cross do you know what the very very first um prophecy about jesus was it's in genesis 3 and what did what did it say when the serpent satan caused men to fall with his temptation what did God say to him? He said, you are cursed above all animals. On your belly shall you go and eat dirt all the rest of the days of your life. And he says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and her seed will crush the head of your seed. Okay, so the, and that is, that, that, that prophecy about G is about Jesus. It's the very first prophecy in the Bible about Jesus. And it says that the seed of the woman, which is Jesus Christ, will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. That was the very first job Jesus had was to crush the serpent, amen, and his seed, amen. And where did that crushing happen? It happened at the cross where the Bible says in Colossians that Jesus made a public spectacle of the enemy at the cross, amen. So when we repent of anything we have in common with the serpent, what happens? We, we are crushing the head of the seed of the serpent. We're partaking of that moment that Jesus did it on the cross. So let's just do that right now. We're just going to start with that right now. And then we're going to do one other thing. And then we are going to be free of the serpent's powers and his influence over our finances. Finally. Amen. Free. So I just want you to pray with me. That's what we're going to do first. 
So just pray with me as we go through this, amen, because I did these, I did this web stream so that you could be free, so that you could get a total victory, amen? So just pray with me and just say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would take your blood and you would wash me clean of every single sin that I have in common with the python. Anything I've done with my money, that sin, I repent of it now. Lord, and I ask that you would just wipe out those sins now. If I have stewarded my money badly, I repent. Just pray with me. If I've cheated anyone, I repent of that. If I've skimmed money off the top, stolen money, robbed anyone of anything, I ask you wash away those sins with your blood. If there's any gambling or extortion, In my bloodline, I ask you forgive me now. If there's any sin in my life or in my family line connected to money and the serpent, I ask you wash me clean of it by your blood. If there's any ill-gotten wages that I've taken advantage of, I repent of that. In Jesus' name. I partake of that moment where you crush the head of the seed of the serpent. Right now, in Jesus' name. That's what you're doing right now. See, as you're saying, as you're repenting, as you're asking the Lord to cleanse you, you're partaking of that moment where the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. That's a powerful moment. It's a powerful moment. You're actually right there at the cross right now. And Jesus is making a public spectacle of the enemy. He's crushing that old serpent. And he's removing him from your finances in the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Angels just walked in the room. They're on fire. <laughs> I'm burning up. Jesus. Just start worshiping Jesus for the power of his cross. We thank you, Jesus, for your cross and how you are cleansing us now. This is an important moment. We come against that python spirit, Lord. By the power of your blood, Lord, we decree and we command that you are wiping out his influences on our life, that he will no longer be in charge of our gains. He will no longer be able to drag us out into the marketplace and beat us and imprison us in our finances. We decree by the power of your blood that our savings accounts are being cleansed. Our investments are being cleansed. Our checking accounts are being cleansed. Our debts are being released and removed. That we're, our, our paychecks no longer have any serpent attached to them. Any income that we have in will not have the serpent attached to it. We decree your blood, your blood in the name of Jesus right now. Your blood washing us clean of everything we have in common with Python right now. In Jesus' name, we expose that serpent and we're crushing his head by the power of the cross. In the name of Jesus now. We thank you, Lord. The, the, the Bible says that it's the blood that atoneth for the soul. That's where our sin lives. It's living in our wounded soul, man. But the blood is atoning for the soul. The blood is cleansing our soul of wrong thinking about money, uh, wrong actions about money, uh, how we wrongly used our will to make bad choices with our money, how we got emotional about our money. We're being cleansed right now in the soul realm by the blood because Leviticus 17 says it is the blood that atoneth for the soul. We thank you, Lord. We receive your cleansing right now. We receive your cleansing right now in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. We thank you, God. 
We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Okay, now stay right there. The blood right now is washing away all the sin. But we have to do one other thing. You see, sin makes wounds in the soul. And those wounds give the enemy the right to come in and afflict us. we got to get rid of those. How do you get rid of those? Do you know that the Bible talks about dunamis? We've talked about that many times on these, on these uh, web streams. Dunamis means uh, excellence of soul. Dunamis is the power that filled up your spirit, man, when you're born again. It's resurrection power, and it actually means excellent soul. It can heal those areas inside you, those wrong thinking, the wrong emotions, wrong choices, the wounded areas that are allowing the serpent to come into your finances in the first place. Well, dunamis comes in many forms, and one of them is fire. Do you know when, when the power came down in the upper room, the fire came down and landed on everybody. Jesus prophesied and told the disciples before it happened what it was. He said, power will come down from on high to clothe you. That word power means dunamis. It was actually dunamis in the form of fire that came down in the upper room. And in the Amplified, it said that it diffused into their souls. That dunamis fire came down and it burned up the stuff inside their soul that was controlling them. I mean, Peter became a new man. He went from the guy that, you know, quit the ministry to go fishing, denied Christ, uh, you know, uh, cursed and everything, saying, I didn't know, I don't know Jesus. I don't know who that is. And he made all those mistakes, you know, hid in the upper room for fear of the Jews. He went from that guy to being the guy that preached to 3,000 people and they all got saved. Why? Because Dunamis fire came down and, quote, diffused into his soul. That dunamis comes directly against those serpents. You know, snakes hate fire. Do you know that? Fire, firefighters will tell you one of the worst things about a fire is when they're going in towards the fire to put it out, all the snakes are running out from the fire because they hate fire. Just decree fire of yourselves right now. I just saw angels of fire coming into this room. They're stationed all over this place. You know, the Bible says that about angels. That that's what they are. It says in Psalm 104 that he maketh his angels, spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. I decree fire right now. Fire is going into your soul. It's diffusing into your soul to burn up every unhealed area where the serpent has found his legal right to attack you right now. As the angels are standing here and the fire is being imparted, it's going through the media right now and it's burning up the stuff inside your soul right now in Jesus' name that's allowing the serpent to be there. Serpents hate fire. You know, in Matthew 3, when John the Baptist is like berating the Pharisees, he said, Oh, you brood of vipers, one who's coming, whose sandal I'm not worthy to un untie, he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. He will take his winnowing fork and separate the chaff from the wheat and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When he was talking to these men who were being controlled by demonic serpents and calling them brood of vipers, he told them the answer to their problem. Jesus was going to come and baptize them with the Holy Spirit and fire. And he would take his winnowing fork and he would separate the chaff from the wheat and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You know what that chaff is, don't you? That chaff is the junk inside your soul that's allowing those snakes to be there in the first place. I command right now, Jesus is coming to baptize you with a whole new level of his presence, of his Holy Spirit, and of his fire. And it's burning up the chaff inside of you right now. Just put your hand on your belly say, that chaff is burning up in the fire. It's burning up the fire. He's separating the chaff from the wheat, the junk in my trunk. He's separating it out from the good stuff. And he's going to burn it up with unquenchable fire. Did you hear what I said? Unquenchable, meaning it can't be stopped. Right now, I decree unquenchable fire, burning up the chaff inside of you so that the brood of vipers and the python can no longer attack you. In Jesus' name, I declare and decree it right now. In the name of Jesus. Just receive that fire right now. Just say, I'm burning up with fire. 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 The snakes are going to take, they're going to go running. They're going to go running. They hate fire. The fire is diffusing into my soul right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Now we're going to do a prophetic act. A prophetic act. 
I want you to, if you got your purse next to you, your wallet or your checkbook or whatever it is, I want you to take your hand and do a prophetic act. You know, God had people do prophetic acts in the Bible, like Ezekiel, when he told them, pack up your bag, dig, dig a hole in the wall and crawl through it. And that's the sign that my people are going to go into captivity. He had them do prophetic acts all the time. Take your hand right now. And I want you to unwind that serpent counterclockwise off of your checkbook. Ready? Take it and go. I unwind you right now off of my checkbook in the name of Jesus. Take out your wallet. Say, I unwind you right now off of my wallet in the name of Jesus, Python spirit. I trample on you in Jesus name. Take your investments in your hands. Say, Python, in the name of Jesus, I unwind you off of my investments right now in the name of Jesus now. Now. Come off now, 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 now in Jesus' name. Go around your house. Prophetically make a move around your house. Wave your arm counterclockwise and say, I unwind you from thy house, from the debts in my house, from the groceries I have to pay for, from the electricity I have to pay for, from the water bill that I have, from my car payments that are in my, the car that's in my garage, from my children's schooling, from their clothes, from all their supplies, from all my medical needs right now. I unwind you, Python, in the name of Jesus now. Right now in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus Take that snake and throw it and say, I remove you now. I toss you out to that dry and arid place. You cannot return until the day of judgment. I set you on fire right now. Do that for your church. When you go into your church, walk around your church like we did in Texas. Walk around your church like we did with Dr. Miles and unwind that python off your church. And you're going to see ministry starting to start breaking forth. Attendance is going to increase. Giving is going to break out in the people's hearts. Worship is going to break out. Miracles are going to break out like it did at Dr. Jerry's church and Miss Martha's church. They start having miracles. They start having heavenly visitations. We decree that right now as we command Python to unwind from our churches, unwind from our ministries, unwind from our businesses right now. We trample on you, you serpent, because Jesus has given us the power to do so in his name. We command you to come loose in the name of Jesus now. Thank you, God. <clears throat> set our souls on fire God set our souls on fire put fire in our house God fire in our house God fire in our house God fire in our souls God move mightily for us God set us on fire set us on fire set us on fire <clears throat> Jesus Jesus in fact you know what Sing with me right now. Everybody knows that song. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody knows that song by Missy Edwards, right? All consuming fire. As you sing it, you're going to see more fire produced in your house. You're my heart's desire. Look, I got to be crazy to do, be doing this on a live web stream, but this stuff really works. This is what I do, and it works. Burning flame of love, come baptize us, come baptize us. Let's just sing together for one minute. Ready? All consuming fire, you're my heart's desire. Burning flame of love, come baptize us, come baptize us. Oh, all consuming fire, you're my heart's desire. Burning flame of love, come baptize us, come baptize us. One more time, come on. All consuming fire, you're my heart's desire. Burning flame of love, come baptize us, come baptize us. A couple more times, come on. All consuming fire, you're my heart's desire. Burning flame of love, come baptize us, come baptize us. One more time, come on. All consuming fire. 
You're my heart's desire, burning flame of love. Come baptize us, come baptize us. I challenge you tonight to pick that song or another one, you know, uh, set my soul on fire, Jesus culture. Play it on your phone or wherever you have it while you're sleeping all night long. And I'm telling you, by in the morning, if the python hasn't already left, it will. You might think, this is so stupid. Kate's singing all-consuming fire on a web stream and, and saying the weird, this is the weirdest teaching ever. But I'm telling you what, this works and you're going to find out it does. Okay, and I challenge you to put it to the test. All right, soak in the fire all night and see what happens when you wake up in the morning. See what kind of dream you get. See what kind of vision you get. If the python hasn't already left, it's going to leave and you're going to see manifestation happen. Now, if you, we only have a little bit of time left, right? What do we have? Two minutes, five minutes, what? Um, ten, ten minutes, ten of. Ten of. Okay, well, I'll take like two or three questions. That's it. What do you got, Amy? Okay, there's a lot of questions that are similar. Yep. And they're almost using python and snakes and Leviathan interchangeably. So please. Pythons, okay, so there's a difference. Wait, repeat back the question. Okay, so Amy's saying that a lot of people are using Python and Leviathan interchangeably. They're honestly, they're different and they have different assignments. Okay, Leviathan has a couple different assignments that I won't go into deeply here because we're really talking about Python. But if you read like Job 3, Job curses the day he was born because he'd been through so much, you know, all his family got killed and and his uh, servants got killed and his herds got stolen. And, and in chapter three, the whole chapter, he's cursing the day he was born. Curse the day I was born and wish I never saw the light of day, which I was never conceived. And then he says this, loose Leviathan on it. What is he saying by saying that? He's saying Leviathan somehow can cause people not to be born, can curse the day that you're conceived, can cause uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, cause abortions, miscarriages. It's one of the many things he does. He also twists communications. It says he's the twisting fleeing serpent. He twists communications. He causes breakups of churches. He causes diseases and disorders of all kinds. He has a different assignment than Python has. Python is really a lot over finances. Okay, because it said that that woman with the spirit of Python, that her masters, that she had that divination spirit and it would cause her masters, it said it brought her masters much gains by her soothsaying, and when Paul cast out that python, they saw they lost the means of their gains. So python is really a lot of, of over the financial realm. But let's hear some of the questions. Um, there was a que question like in that manner, but I think okay. I it. Um, so if you have sowed and it has been years and you have not seen the fulfillment of the promise, could it be the process God is doing or demonic interference? Okay, so Amy said one of the questions was, if you'd sowed and you haven't seen the manifestation for years, what's the deal? I think this is part of it. These serpents I've seen are so sneaky. They're the masters of camouflage. They have the technology of camouflage down pat. I can remember having back aches and neck aches of every kind and didn't have a clue it was a snake. And when a serpent came off, I would be healed. I mean, I've seen people be healed of an insomnia when the snakes came off and they didn't even know it was a snake. I've, I've, I've seen miracles of all kinds happen in people's physical bodies and in their finances. And I would have never guessed it was a snake. I had no idea until, until God showed me. So I'm thinking that if you've already sowed and you've been waiting for the manifestation, that this part of this teaching tonight about Python could be one of the things that's been holding it back. Because I notice when I go to the churches and I teach these two things together in connection with each other, then the manifestation of the 111 happens. But we got to get rid of what's squeezing the finances. And it's, it's and one of the things, one of the many things is this python serpent. So I would go back and watch this part of this teaching again, if I were you, and go through the activation again. And I would play that fire song all night long until you burn that stuff out of your soul that's in common with python and it leaves and stops squeezing. And then I think you'll see a manifestation. I'll be hearing back from you. Go ahead, Amy. I have not seen the python, but I've seen huge alligators. What does that mean? Well, a couple people have said that they've seen alligators. Okay, so Leviathan in uh, Isaiah 27 says that he is the twisting fleeing serpent. Okay, but it also in, in Job 41, it talks about in some of the translations, it refers to Leviathan as a crocodile. So it's like Leviathan can... 
um, multitask. He can appear as many things. I, his name, Leviathan, the, the name Leviathan also means dragon. And when I saw Leviathan once, I saw him with a dragon head, but a serpent body. So it's like he can take on different forms. So if you're seeing like alligators, I would think you might be dealing with a form of Leviathan. And you definitely need to get the serpent and the soul then because I do explain Leviathan in here and we go through an activation to get rid of Leviathan. Okay, go ahead. What else you got, Amy? Um, I saw a cobra strike while pursuing soul healing with the glory light of Jesus. Any explanation of this? I'm going to keep the question. Okay, so Amy said the question was that she saw a cobra strike when she was doing the glory light. They, the serpents hate the light. Okay, the Bible actually says that his light will become a fire because light is like another form of fire and serpents hate fire. If you're seeing that, um, how long ago was that would be what I would like to hear. And if um, you had anything happen after that, like to your physical body or anything else, a lot of times these, these poisonous vipers, when they bite you, it can cause a physical sickness. But there should be no worries. If I were you, I would now soak in the fire all night long, play a fire song, and just let that fire wash over you. And it will burn up anything else in your soul that allowed that cobra to strike in the first place. I mean, I had actually a cobra strike at me once. Amy was with me when it happened on tour. And what had happened is, is I had formed an indentation about this big in my breast, and I wasn't sure what it was. But I had read that if your breast starts to change shape, it could be a sign of breast cancer. And I was soaking in fire, and I saw a cobra like you did, and it was striking at me. And I asked, what is it trying to do, Lord? And he said, it's um, trying to give you breast cancer. And so I continued to soak in the fire and I didn't even know what I had in common with it. So I just repented. I said, I'm partaking of the blood where Jesus crushed the head of the serpent at the cross. And I just did that for like a night and I got rid of it. Now I know I got rid of it by just doing those simple things and putting my faith on it because that, that indentation that was as big as my finger, it actually filled in about a couple weeks later. It took three nights, but it filled in. So I knew that I had not only gotten rid of that serpent, but that I had been healed. So I suggest you do the same thing to make sure that you're totally rid of it and anything you had in your soul with it is gone. Just soak in the blood tonight, you know, play a blood song, sing along with it, and then play a fire song while you sleep tonight, amen? On repeat, all night. Okay, what else you got as There's, we? Um, this, can, this is probably the last question, but, um, well, let's just do two final ones. One, um, many people are saying they see a, this snake or that snake on a person or a thing or something. Can you give the instruction on what to do? Okay, well, and the when I see a, a serpent on somebody, okay, the question is, what do you do when you see a snake on somebody? Okay. Or something. Like or a something. Or a work or something. A church or work. Okay. If I see the serpent and I see its head, then I know it's been um, exposed enough. Like, I'll be soaking in fire. I'll play fire songs, like, all night while I sleep. You know, one time I did that for months in a row, and... All kinds of serpents came off of me and I was healed of all kinds of things. Breast cancer, ovarian cancer, um, uh, restless leg syndrome. I had all kinds of miracles happen by just playing fire songs every night and singing along with them and, and receiving the impartation of that dunamis fire to burn up the chaff in my soul. And what would happen is, is I would drive those snakes out of hiding. That's what they are. They're in hiding. They're masters of that camouflage technology. And they're in hiding, but the fire drives them out. Do you remember when Paul was on the, on the island of Malta and he, he, it was raining, it was cold. He picked up a bundle of sticks, it said, and there was a serpent hiding inside of it. And he didn't even know it. He's walking around carrying a serpent, a deadly viper inside of this bundle of sticks. But when he threw it on the fire, the fire, the heat of the fire drew, it drove that serpent out of its hiding place. Now it bit him, but he shook it off and he was unharmed. That's how it is with us. We're walking around like Paul. We're carrying around these poisonous serpents on our money, on our children, on our, you know, on our households, on our ministries, on our churches, and we don't even know it. We're just carrying around doo -doo -doo, like Paul, unaware. And But when we throw that bundle with that serpent on the fire, the fire will drive it out, into, out of its hiding place. So if you start soaking on fire regularly, it'll drive it out. Now, let's say you see it on somebody else. If you see the head, by faith, you can grab it and pull it off of that person. If you don't, if you just see the body, that means that it's still like embedded inside that person's attached to something in their soul. And if you know them well enough, 
do them a favor and have them watch this teaching or have them listen to Serpent in the Soul and have them soak in fire. Just have them play a fire song and sing along with it and then fall asleep and then wake up, sing along with it, fall asleep and do that for a couple nights or even a week. And it will drive that serpent out of its hiding place. And once you see the head, you can, by a prophetic act, using your faith, you can grab it, pull it off, throw it to the abyss and command it to stay there and never to return till the day of judgment. Now, I did that with a friend of mine, uh, a very famous woman. Her grandfather was one of the most famous healing evangelists in the 1950s and 60s. And I did a meeting with her. And she was, when I saw, met her, she was like, oh, frantic because she was feeling like she wanted to quit, like, like life was horrible. She, was, she knew she was being attacked and she didn't know what it was. And I got in the car with her, looked, and I saw a python wrapped around her. And I saw its head. So I knew I was able to take it off. And when I took it off of her, she was instantly freed and healed. And the uh, affliction and the torment stopped instantly. But it's because I saw it. And then by faith, I used my faith to reach up to the place I saw that head and grab it and remove it from her. So if you see the head, you can take it off. If you don't, put fire on them. Have them soak in fire. <laughs> and then it will come off. It will come off. It will. It will. Snakes hate fire. That fire will drive it out of its hiding place just like it did when Paul threw that bundle of sticks on the fire. Okay, one more, and then I think we're done. What do you got, Amy? Um, this is the last one. Is how do we redeem the seed we have sown? Redeem the seed you've sown. You, <laughs> you got to ask me questions that make sense. I'm sorry. To me, you planted a seed, you put your faith on it, and then you take revelations like this to break off any resistance that's preventing that seed from sprouting, growing, and producing fruit. That's how you redeem it. This, this teaching tonight that I'm teaching you, that's going to help you redeem it. That's, that would be my answer to that. Um, and would you let everyone know that, um, that Serpent in the Soul live stream that you just did is available? Yeah, yeah, okay. Go on the website. And what's it titled? Um, Serpent and the Soul. Is, parts it, one, two, and is it YouTube or is it our site? It's our site. Okay, you can go on my website, katiesusa.com or YouTube. And there's a, a free product there. It's a, it's a live stream called Serpent and the Soul. There are three sessions I did at a conference. There are healing activations in each one of those sessions. And it really gives you the full explanation about how the fire heals the soul of anything we have in common with the serpent. It talks about different types of snakes, different types of miracles. I mean, this, you got to watch this because it's really, really going to help you. So I would definitely uh, go and check that out as a great resource for you to get more understanding. So you don't think that was the weirdest teaching I've ever heard in my life. Because if you watch the live web stream, I do Bible, 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 because I had a lot more time to do it in that than I do here. So definitely uh, check that out. Amen. And, and what do we else? We got anything? Um, if they want the fire soak, just go online and yeah. get that. People are asking what's it If you want to get the fire soak, you can, you know, I, I play a fire song and sometimes I play this fire soak and it's just a, a disc I made where I am speaking and decreeing all the different fire scriptures in the, in the Bible, which there's tons and they're awesome about how God builds fire around us and he uses fire against our enemies and and how fire comes into our soul and burns up every bit of uh, chaff, even the root. It says even the root, it burns up the root and everything wicked inside of us. It's really cool. So you can just go online, just get this, the serpent and soul fire soak and play that. Pray along with it. Play it while you sleep. It's going to really help you out. Amen. OK, I think that's it. I think we're, we're out of time. OK. All right. I bless you. I command that you would see your manifestations of 111. I command that the fire would continue to burn on you and then it would drive everything, all the chaff, it would burn up all the chaff inside your soul and then it would drive all the serpents out of hiding and away from you so that you can have the manifestation of the fullness of God's promises in your life. All right, everybody, we love you. I know this was a long one, but I think it was well worth the effort and you're going to see a big difference happening in your life. God bless you. We'll see you soon.